Eh. The Martian was alright. Yes, it was alright. I know, I know, I didn't love it as much as everyone else. I wanted to, though, but not. First off, let me say that I am ai really enjoyed the book. It was really suspenseful, really thrilling, really engaging. And the movie was just sort of okay. And I think part of that is because I read the book and I'll, there's a lot of t tension was lost because I already knew what was going to happen. And if you haven't read the book, if you really don't know much, I feel like you'll probably enjoy this film and a lot of these problems that bothered me aren't going to bother you. But... Or whatever, but they bothered me, so it's just sort of alright. Plot of the movie, mission to Mars, something goes wrong, crew has to leave, they leave one of their own behind because they think he's dead, and now Mark, astronaut Mark Watney, played by Matt Damon, stuck on Mars in a premise that is very similar to Interstellar, and also features Jessica, once again features Jessica Chastain. And that story is mostly intact. I mean, there's still the fun, how's he going to get out of here, and all the scenarios and the solutions are both tense and very creative. I just, it, everything about it just felt a little conventional. I mean, this is basically like Apollo 13 where the mission goes wrong and we need to save the guy. And just the way it was, and again, it, this might just be me reading the book and, like, me thinking about what wasn't in there more than what was in there. In fact, that's probably what it is. But a lot of it, just bother me like like there was a lot of elements in the film where, like there wasn't as much science fiction in the film like they were doing a lot of stuff but they weren't really explaining the science behind it like an in interstellar in the book like oh need to grow stuff and I'll grow it like I'm not gonna really explain the science of it like and the show is like I'm gonna science the shit out of it's like can we learn what the science behind what you're doing is so because that was part of the interesting thing of the book, is that it was science fiction. Like, they explained the science behind everything in such detail that you felt like it could happen. Whereas here, it's like, okay, do this. And we're not even given time to establish, take in, like, a lot of the stuff. It's like, something will happen, then we'll immediately montage through Mark, like, working around it. Like, there were, there was, like, one moment or two where it, there was real tension, like, oh, shit. But for the most part, like, I felt like a lot of the problems, they like, got quickly resolved and easily got around it. If you've read the book or seen the trailers, which spoil the entire movie, by the way, then pretty much all the tension is killed. Watney's also not as interesting as in the books. In the books, like, he's keeping a lot of logs, and that's how the book is told through his log entries, and they're very fun. Like, it's interesting to see how he, like, reacts to everything. Like, he'll, like, make a sarcastic comment, like, okay, this is kind of a spoiler, but in order to grow potatoes, he uses his own poop as a fertilizer, and he jokes about that. And he does a bit about that, but for the most part, we're not getting a whole lot of how he feels. It's more just he's doing stuff, but we're not really learning what he makes of it. There what? The film is beautiful to look at, though. I love the shots of Mars. Very big, very grand, very gorgeous. I really didn't care that it was CGI because it was so well done. Although, you don't need to see it in 3D. I saw it because that was the time that worked for me, but... In all honesty, you could just see this in 2D and you'll be fine. I mean, there were, I mean, there's like one big shot in the beginning where there's a lot of 3D and it's like, oh my gosh, this looks gorgeous. But after that, like, it becomes one of those things where it just, there's a little bit more depth to the image, but that's it. I mean, there's this thing called the blurry test where the more blurry the image is, the more they're using 3D in the shot. And I tested it out, like, I took off my glasses like a couple times during the film and I could see everything all right like occasionally it got a little blurry, but for the most part it looks fine and yeah it's just a gimmick that they're just I mean it but I mean basically you're just paying more money for something and sorry anyway but yeah, so I blanked out. So yeah, don't need to pay the CGI. It felt like gravity a little bit at points, like especially in the beginning and the end. Like there were a lot of shots and scenes that felt remarkably similar to Gravity. And this is like Interstellar, where it's like, oh, it's just a coincidence. It's just like a bit of tragedy that Gravity stole Interstellar's thunder. It's like. 
No, Gravity came out, like, two years ago. So right around the time The Martian was probably in, like, pre-production or about to start filming, this film came out. And it, so there's... It's not like a coincidence. Like, it's very obvious, I guess, that film inspired Ridley Scott or changed how he looked at the film because I it did very much feel like it was some parts of it were ripped straight from Gravity. The film also incorporates a lot of disco music. It's meant to sort of serve as his way of killing time on Mars. And in the book, like, he doesn't use disco music to kill time. Like, on one of his partner's laptops that they left behind, they have, like, all these episodes of, like, this boring sitcom. And there's this really funny bit of how he's just watching it to kill time. And it's, like, starts out, he's like, oh, this is crap. And then he act and, like, a few entries later, he's, like, really invested in this terrible sitcom because there's nothing else to watch. And again, that's kind of amusing. Here, they try to do the disco music, and it's a bit, except with the exception of the fact that most of the disco music is pretty good. And also, it starts out as a bit of comedy, but then it just starts feeling like an excuse to shove as much eight, seven disco music in here as possible, including Love Train, which I've heard of before, but most people, but again, a lot of songs you've heard before. And they really... And there was nothing clever about the integration of the choices of songs. They were just, hey, let's put this popular song in. Hey, let's put this. And it was overdone. I mean, like, if they did it once or twice, it would have been cute. But they did it, like, six or seven times to a point where it's like, okay, now you, you stop being cute. Now you're obnoxious. Now it just feels like... It got to a point where it, I was beginning to wonder if they the people making this movie thought that putting pop songs in their movie would automatically make it better, to which I say no. You need to be smart and clever about that stuff, like the opening to the crying game they're planning when a man was a woman. They do not just throw that in there because it's a good song. It serves a purpose in the story, and if I don't want to spoil that movie if you haven't seen it, but if you have, you know that there's a significance to that song. But here it's just overdone. But yeah, I mean, I don't hate The Martian. I thought it was fine. It's just there was nothing special about it, and... Considering this is the umpteen survival in space movie, the third time we've gotten it, I'm kind of like, like, okay, can we stop with this now? This is, stop becoming cliche, and this is just starting to feel lazy. But I mean, I feel like general audiences are going to like, I mean, if you haven't read the book, you'll enjoy the movie because you won't be like a book Nazi. And again, if you're just, I feel like it's fine. Like, I, I can see why people like it. It's just for me, like, I don't know. I always tend to not enjoy stuff as much as the critics. I'm a bit more reserved. Like, I really... I, I'm i not about the conventional. I like to have something a bit more special. And this film is fine. It just... It felt a little conventional, and it there were some elements of the book that made it a bit more than just a conventional survival story, and I felt like that got lost, and it just sort of became this conventional it, story. It's okay. It's fine. I just really don't care about it. Yeah, I mean, I'm glad I saw it. I, again, I again, I thought it was fine. Like, it did not like butcher the source material. It just sort of like, it did it all right. It just didn't do it well. And now, normally, this would be the part of the movie where I, the video where I talk about the trailers that I saw. But here's the thing: I got in here just as the movie was starting. Like. For reasons I'm not going to get into, like, I couldn't get into the film until... I didn't get into the theater until, like, ten minutes after the movie started. And, like, here's the thing. I was a little delayed, so... Getting there, so... I kind of figured, okay, the AMC theater I go to, they usually run, like, 18 minutes worth of trailers. So I was like, alright, well, I won't get there until around, like like, ten minutes after the film starts, so I figure I should have enough, assuming that the film isn't sold out, assume, which it, thankfully it wasn't, although it was pretty packed, assuming the popcorn and ticket line wasn't long, which, surprisingly, the ticket line wasn't long. I mean, considering, like, what's going on in the theater I'm going to, like, in regards to, like, they're upgrading, like, part of it, so it's, like, the cushy seats, which, great, except for the part that you're limiting the seating and you're raising the prices, but anyway... They were pretty fast about the ticket line. Popcorn line was pretty short, so I was able to get in there just... So by the time I had, like, got my ticket, got my popcorn, and $5 
bottled water. Seriously, it's so freaking overpriced. The trailers and starts. So, like, I usually, like, will claim my seat and then go get concessions. Cause... So when I sat down, like, they were just... It looked like they had just finished showing the In the Heart of the Sea trailer. And when I came back, they were just finishing the Joy trailer. Joy I'm looking forward to... Not so much in the heart of the sea. We'll have to wait and see on that one. See what I did there. But yeah, I'm going to have my written review up at some point. Not right away. Like, I have some stuff to take care of. It's written. Don't worry. It's not like the on the Man, Man the Wire review where I haven't even written it yet. But So it will be up. Just check back. 24 hours. I would say one hour, but I'm like, I don't want to promise something and then keep it. But I def, I mean, I have it. I just have to copy and paste it. So yeah, leave your thoughts on The Martian in the comments below. Do you think Ridley Scott's back? And also, have you read the book and do you prefer the book? You know, this has been a pretty eh year. I mean, there's been a couple films I've liked, but nothing really special. And even though the year's picked up, like, I don't feel like we've gotten that many really good films. Hopefully that changes, though. So yeah, this is J-Stars 60, and I'll see you guys later. Until then, take care.